This Friday, I'm coming at you with another personal story about my friend Mojo. This story, I think, adds into life and addiction pretty well. I don't know if everyone can relate to this. It has to do with something called being derelict, or sort of abandoning everything. And it's something that addicts do, they they have issues with. Um, it, it can mess with your motivation, it can mess with your self-worth, and it can really mess with your drive to do anything if you start feeling this enough. And this feeling that I'm talking about is sort of the action of the ostrich putting their head in the sand, um, ignoring everything that's important around you, putting off your duties, embracing the numb feeling, embracing distraction. It's lots of things like that. Today's story is also about my friend in this homeless shelter, Mojo. Mojo, of course, being my single and solitary friend in the shelter with a notoriously dirty room. So to begin this story, uh, just a few days ago, I was in there kind of checking up on him. Um, I know he's going through some employment issues right now. Another thing that he's been going through is a bed bug infestation in his room. It's gotten kind of bad. Recently, or like weeks ago, he bought tons of this stuff, like this fogger stuff that you kind of set, leave your room for a few hours and come back at, um, you know, poison. And so he bought and used a lot of poison in his room. And so, you know, I'm checking up on that too. So I'm talking to him about his job and I'm looking around and I notice a bed bug on his curtain and then you know his room is so dirty there are just piles of clothes everywhere so i'm like okay if you use lots of fogger they probably lived in these piles of clothes and survived so they're probably still around so i bring it up to him and i'm like hey man um your bed bugs are like alive and well still and this guy is thick he's just like no there aren't no and i don't know why you do that but he kind of gets like that just sort of like nah no i'm telling you they, they don't bite me man like i'd know right really you'd know but he's very adamant he's very adamant like no there are no more bed bugs in this room I've taken care of them all. They don't bite me, man. Like, I must not be like other people. They don't even really come after me. I'm like, okay, that's wild. Important to the story, two weeks prior, there was like a nest or a colony or a buildup kind of by the bedboard, his bedboard. And it was like, you could see just lines of the poop by all the cracks and crevices on this thing. They were like all up on this bedboard, right? Like really close to him. So he pointed out that bedboard colony had been destroyed and that what I was seeing was just some like carcasses around the room, right? Because they like bed bugs mole. I know the story is so gross. And I'm still trying to argue my point to him. Kind of like, hey, no, I'm looking around and dude, it's been days since you've done this, right? I just saw one alive and there's so many molted carcasses around. This is like evidence of a civilization. So it's just kind of like this little back and forth. And I feel like I'm about to cross the line with him because like he's really just putting his head in the stand and I can't kind of understand it. Like bed bugs are, it's kind of an issue when you have as many as he might have. And I'm trying to like bring this home to him. Like, hey dude, I'm just looking around and seeing evidence here. So I go to the other side of his bed and I grab a corner of a sheet and I'm like, well, let's just take a look. And I pull up a corner of his sheet. So I pull up this blue bed sheet and it exposes one, a, you know, a white sheet below that that's designed to fit around the actual mattress and two, a massive bed bug colony just right under this one dark colored sheet. I'm talking like at least 18 bed bugs in this one corner, right, of mattress. Right under them, just one layer of sheet. This is like, you gotta think about a bed. There's a single layer of sheet, and then there's a massive bed bug colony. Just the first area I lift this sheet. And his reaction is, hey, 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 oh no, man, put it back, put it back, put it back. So, you know, well, fair enough. That's really disgusting. So I do put it back. And, you know, with some encouragement, he gets the last of his poison and pours it right on the mattress without moving on the area that we saw all those bed bugs. But he doesn't even lift up the sheet again. He just pours it over the sheet. And he's like, it'll soak through and get up. And I gotta express again, it's like a blue sheet on top, right? A layer of bed bugs. And then a white kind of sheet that wraps around the mattress itself is the bottom layer. And it was just covered in bed bug shit, right? So I must have only seen like a portion of this column. And so after he kind of does this, right? Just puts the sheet on just right back the way it was, dumps some poison on top of everything, not even lifting up the sheet to sort of expose the bed bugs again, just pouring this little bit of poison that he mixed with water because he didn't have enough poison onto this, the top of the sheet that the bed bugs were under, not even lifting it up to like actually get the poison in there. Just, and I'm kind of watching this. After which he totally gets this kind of like odd mood where he just objects to this idea completely of discussing bed bugs or like acknowledging their existence or exerting any energy whatsoever to get up and destroy this colony. That's literally underneath his feet, by the way. The way he sleeps is like his feet, it goes right there to the edges of his bed where his feet are. And there's just two massive bed bug colonies. 
massive. Like there were big adults crawling all over and just the half a second I'd lifted this thing up and a bunch of baby nymphs everywhere. And it's something that does would never make sense. Like, I feel like almost anywhere else where you, you're talking to a person who's sitting basically on top of a situation like that, right beside you, there's a active, alive, writhing bed bug colony. And so like I do change the topic and I'm obviously after like a minute, like, all right, man, I'm out. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to hang out in this little room with like bed bugs everywhere. And it kind of sucks that he has bed bugs because like, you know, he's the only guy that I really hang out with in this place. And now his room is infested with bed bugs. So the next day. I noticed that he's done something about the bed bug situation. He's added a new sheet to his bed and done precisely nothing else. Just added a new sheet. And he's like, haven't seen him, haven't seen him since. And like his, ex his facial expression, I just somehow know better than to even try and ask like, oh, what'd you do? Because he didn't do anything. He just added a sheet to his bed. And I guess to drive home again, how this is, I don't know if you know what bed bugs are, but if you have one of them, you have another 300 of them, right? They, they, like, reproduce very quickly. Um, you cannot separate yourselves from them with a bed sheet. And, you know, that's a solution. That's all he's done. I don't think he's going to do anything else. Really, I think, and I'm kind of paying attention to this situation, I guess you could call it, or just something unfold. He's not doing anything about this big old colony of bed bugs directly under him he's just put another sheet on top of it and it's going to slowly grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and even in the little bit when you just stop it and talk to him he's like itching himself and he's adamant that they're nowhere around and they don't eat him even though he's bumps all over him he's just in complete denial about this very real bed bug infestation i mean there is a zero percent chance that they're just in that one area, he's been battling these bed bugs who have to have been only surviving because there are so many piles of clothes in this dude's room. So this is an ongoing thing. And like the actual situation on this guy's mattress must be like obscenely disgusting and obscenely bad. And it's one of those things where it's just like, I'm glad I've been sober for like five months now. Because now I look at something like that and I'm like, good God, how many like, how many little bed bug infestations do I have, dude, that like I've been ignoring? And not to make this sound all preachy or anything, but like kind of, right? Like that's such, that's such an addict thing to do. Like there's this total obnoxious, gross problem that will bite you because bed bugs bite you. They'll make you bleed. They'll multiply. They're gross. They're like a little hidden, but you feel them. They gnaw at you. They'll drive you nuts. And you can see something like that. And a, an appropriate response can be, well, I'll just put a sheet over it that'll do nothing except block my vision. And that is, that's totally acceptable. Why even think about it after you put a sheet down? I mean, you fixed it. And it's wild that thinking like that can even be relatable to me. Because it is relatable to me. I I can understand that. It's not understandable, but I can understand that. <clears throat> and no pun intended when I call this sobering, but it is a little sobering to think about it, isn't it? I mean, it's almost like as the weeks go by, I'm starting to kind of like realize my surroundings more and more, and it's freaky as hell. One of my neighbors, pretty much, lives like that. And he just quit his job too, man. And now I'm even thinking about it. It's like if Mojo can't even handle the bed bug problem that he's sleeping on top of how is he gonna get a new job you know he just he quit his old job like a week ago i don't know man it sucks i i, I heard him a few days ago talking about one of his dreams i guess and i hate listening to other people's dreams even even his but it was basically a dream where he got locked out of his room and couldn't get in and people were yelling at him and i'm just like man maybe that's maybe that's a little prophetic you know maybe you're riding the line of getting kicked out of a homeless shelter and sort of just thinking about that, you know, any ego that I have just goes right out of the door when I'm like, oh, well, those are my neighbors. That is actually like the situation that I'm in. Those, that's the situation that people like me are in. That right there. <clears throat> you ignore problems to that extent where it's, it literally extends into the physical world. It's not just a little mental game you do. It's No, you just ignore problems almost professionally. That's the world I'm in. And that freaks me out. I don't know if I've expressed this enough, but I want the hell out of the shelter. 
And I don't know, man. He, he really is a good guy. I've seen some comments saying, man, people like that. I don't know. He's a good guy. It's terrible that he's in the situation that he's in. It really sucks that, like, I just don't see him sobering up, and I don't see him having the ability to get out of his rut, I guess. So we're going to end it here, and we're going to try and end it on a more happy note. We don't want to make it all sad, because at the end of the day, it does suck. Like, it sucks to see a guy I, I care about go through something like this, but it's sobering, right? Like, it makes me look around and say, like, what the hell am I doing here? I, like, I need to get the hell out of here. That's what I need to do. And that it sucks that it's about a friend, but it's time to stop ignoring all my problems. You could say, I don't want to end up sleeping on a bed full of bed bugs. Oh, end of video update. I had mentioned that I'd reached out for housing assistance, and they said, don't have an income, or you're not going to get as much assistance. I'm losing my mind in the shelter, so I found a nice little part-time job. I start my second day today. Wish me luck. See you later.